Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Night Face, bringing you my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 2 review. We're going to dive into it, non-spoiler first, then we're going to dive into spoilers. Uh, I like this episode, another great uh, build-up episode that keeps building the momentum, a lot of great interactions. We got group interactions in this one without going into specifics. I do admit I like the first episode just a tad bit better. So, yeah, right off the bat, I'll give this one a 9 out of 10. Still solid. Still, you know, with the characters interacting. It's great to see them having these conversations. And they're all fascinating. Most of them are, really. And more character development with, uh, you know, John and Sansa, Tyrion, and Daenerys, which we'll get into. Uh, <laughs> we'll definitely get into how I feel about Daenerys. Uh, her character is kind of going down south for me. And we'll get into that into the spoilers, but yeah, I don't know why I'm doing non-spoilers. You, you should be caught up, okay? So we're going to dive into spoilers right now. Boom, one minute mark. Let's talk spoilers, guys, for the night is dark and full of spoilers. Uh, yeah, more, uh, like, not reunions. We got that out of the way, but more, like, group interactions, which I really liked. And I mean group, like that scene we'll get into uh, with uh, Tyrion, Jaime, uh, Brienne, Podrick, and Tormund, which was... My favorite scene of this episode when they're all drinking and talking amongst each other. But we start the episode off right where we left off <laughs> last episode with the trial of Jamie Lannister. Jamie fucking Lannister. <laughs> well, not really. It's more like a like a Winterfell council meeting in a sense, you know. And uh, of course, Daenerys is not liking that shit that Jamie's there, reminding everybody he's a fucking Kingslayer. He killed my you mad Targaryen daddy, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, which she rightfully has to be mad at Jamie. A lot of them, especially Bran, but Bran is all, like, all chill. You know, Netflix and chill. I'm the three-eyed raven. I don't give a fuck, you know? He's on that status. So he's not saying anything. I was expecting him to be the first one to talk. Um, Sansa agrees with Daenerys at first. And then Brienne takes the stand. You know, she defends Jamie. She reminds, she tells, actually, she pleads with Sansa because she knows Sansa will hear what she has to say. And it works. And it's in Sansa's character to actually believe uh, Brienne, you know, after everything she's done for her. And Brienne reminded Sansa, like, hey, I wouldn't have been able to save you if Jamie didn't keep his oath. Didn't arm me up, like level me up <laughs> with the Valyrian steel sword, you know, so I can help you escape, you know, Ramsey and all that shit. So Sansa changes her mind, and then John is just, like, ignoring Danny, like, yeah, fuck it, like, you know, we need more men. Uh, you know, uh, fucking Danny throws that insult on, like, a man with, or, like, only one hand, you know, she's being a bitch, and <laughs> we'll get into all that. More of Daenerys, oh, man, I just, her character is just going downhill for me. Her character's just gone sour. I'm really not liking Daenerys at all. I think she is unfit to be queen. You clearly see, we've been seeing shades of that in, in you know, these recent seasons and even in the previous episode. Definitely this one just hammers that in that, yeah, Daenerys, maybe she shouldn't sit on the Iron Throne. Now, fuck that. She shouldn't sit on the Iron Throne. You know, the way she's, like, talking down. She talked down to my boy Tyrion. You know, she's like, oh, maybe I should get another hand, you know? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'll talk to my boy, Tyrion Lannister, like that, yo, shit. And even Tyrion was like, I guess one of you before, you know, when this war is over, will be wearing the Hand of the King, you know, badge. He tells uh, Jorah that. And I like that later in the episode, Jorah, um, you know, tells her like, hey, you need to confine in Tyrion at least, you know, like, give him a chance. He's like, you gave me a chance. You know, you exiled me, came back. And you gave me a chance, so why not give Tyrion a, a chance, too, you know? So I'm glad they depart in Jamie. Jamie has that one-on-one -on -one with Bran by that tree. I forgot the fuck the tree is called. I know there's a name for that tree. Um, but, you know, Bran basically tells him, like, hey, you know, if I told him the truth, then you wouldn't be helping us in this battle, which is true. And he says something so chilling where he's just like, how do you know there's going to be an after? Hmm? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> what does this mean? Does this mean Jamie's fucked? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, more great interactions. I like that 
uh, scene where they're planning everything out. Uh, Brienne is going to be like in the trenches. She's going to defend the, the, the front line or the left line or something like that. And then Jamie comes to Brienne, and Brienne is like, what the fuck? Why are you being so nice? <laughs> you know, we never start conversations with you insulting me, which is true. Well, I remember, was it in season three when he's like, you're such a big woman or something like that. You have a big woman or something like that. Well, he's trying to escape. But he, so Jamie's come a long way. He has, I think he has one of the best outstanding, like, character arcs in this show. Yeah, because he, he starts off as this egotistical just disgusting person <laughs> and then you find so many layers to his character why he is the keen slayer why that was burned you know that he was just branded that by a lot of people and really he had every right to kill the mad king because he was gonna blow everybody to kingdom come with fucking wildfire so he had to do the right thing he had to do the less honorable thing and he did you know for the sake of good so jamie's always had the potential to be good it's always been there he's just he just chose the wrong path, especially with Thursday and shit. I'm glad he got away from her, but who knows? Braun is coming with that crossbow, yo. I hope he don't do it. <laughs> um, What else? Oh, we get the one-on-one -on -one mean girl's face-off between Sansa and Daenerys, and that was a great scene. And it seemed like at first it was working like um, Daenerys was warming up to Sansa. Sansa was warming up to um, Daenerys, and they were having a heart-to-heart, -heart, and... Sansa's like, do you love my brother and all this? And Daenerys is like, yeah, I do. It all changed. Because she said, oh, I... Yo, right there, Sansa, she knew. She's like, you fool of shit, girl. She caught her. She caught the hypocrisy when Daenerys is like, yeah, all I thought was about the Iron Throne until I met your brother. And, oh, everything changed. And then Sansa just hits her with a whammy. Like, you know, what? when she says, when Daenerys goes back to saying, after I take the Iron Throne. And Daenerys was like, what about the North? You know, we vowed not to take any vows from anybody. Not to bend down the knee or bow down to any king or queen. And immediately she just lets go of her hand and gives her that resting bitch face. Like, like bitch, what? <laughs> I'm just like, yo, Daenerys, what the fuck? Oh, man. Aggra aggravating the, the fuck out of me. Like, oh. I don't like it. Like, she is selfish at this point. Like, all she cares about, she just vies for that Iron Throne. Why are you any different from these other people who had that thirst for the Iron Throne, you know? Like, come on. Like, there are bigger issues here at play. And, you know, jumping ahead to the end of the episode. Let's just fuck it. We're in the crypt again. It's like, if you want to reveal secrets, just go to the fucking crypts of Winterfell and just reveal your deepest, darkest fucking secrets. And I guess that's the place to do it. So, yeah, John tells her, like, hey, uh, that's Lyanna Stark. He's looking at his sister, uh, you know, I guess his sister. No, his sister or her his aunt? No, that's his mom. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> Sorry. His mom, Lyanna Stark statue. He says, that's my mom. And then she mentioned about Rhaegar Targaryen raping her and all that, and which was a falsified bullshit story, you know, about Robert's be rebellion built on a lie. And John just tells her, like, yep, yeah, it's me. I'm... <laughs> I'm egg on Targaryen, and she's like, whoa. And instead of having that reaction, I think any normal aunt would, when it dawns on them, they, they've been banging their nephew this entire time, like, you're my nephew, and we've been fucking, you know, or, or you know, like, like if she actually cared about John, But no, instead, she's like, that makes you way, that makes you the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. And, and John's just looking at her like, what the fuck? Like, that's all you care about? My God, you know? Really? That's all she, uh, Yo. I was just talking to some of my peeps on Stardust. And, yeah, like, I, I can see Danny totally backstabbing John. It's Game of Thrones, you know? People get backstabbed all the fucking time. And who, who better to do it than somebody that we were rooting for in the beginning and now we're kind of, like, resenting because they're showing their true colors and people that... You know, are morally compromised. They're not honorable like Ned Stark or John. And you know, like those are the ones that get away with murder, pretty much in the show. And they get away with shit. Uh, I'm fucking worried about John. I hope not. It feels like this battle. I feel like most of the Starks will be dead, which ugh, just is gonna crush me. I swear, if all the Starks are dead, including my boy Tyrion and this bitch Daenerys <laughs> and this Daenerys fucking Targaryen. It's still alive. It's like, what the fuck is the point of watching this show, you know? 
But I'll, I'll probably keep watching it. I ain't gonna be like one of those people after the red wedding. They're like, fuck, dude, you fuck, I'm out, I'm out, son. You know, like, you remember that? <laughs> hey, um, if you think this is gonna have a, have a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. Remember that line, people. It's very true. Uh, so let's talk about other scenes. In particular, um, let's see here. I guess Grey Worm Missandei had a moment, but it's like, we just gloss over that shit, you know? <laughs> uh, that happened. Oh, oh, I like that moment with Davos where he saw the little girl. She had, like, gray scale. I believe she had gray scale. She, she had her face burn. It reminded her, reminded him of uh, Shireen. Ugh, that breaks my heart. Fucking Stannis, what a bastard. I can't believe he did that shit. Burning his own daughter on the cross. That's probably the, one of the most disturbing deaths it really fucked me up. Like, like that death in particular, hearing, oh, God, just hearing Shireen's agonizing screams is just, it's painful to think about. It's, it hurts me just as much as the Red Wedding. Yeah, so that was a touching moment there. But here's the thing. I noticed a lot of characters are having good, like, genuine moments. They're, like, scratching things off their bucket list, and I'm just like, oh, no. This is, you know, you know how it is, like, when, when a character on a the show, they, they have good heartfelt moments you're like oh fuck, that's so good great moment there and then usually that is foreshadowing to their inevitable death and i'm just like no fuck there was a lot of moments like that in this episode and particularly the knighting of brienne we'll get to that uh, let's talk about gendry and Arya getting it all yeah <laughs> the greatest fan fiction that came true i mean game of thrones fans are just gonna fucking lose it they're gonna make memes they're going to be like, I sh I've been shipping these two since season three. You know, they're just, just going to go buck wild with this. I don't blame them. I, it was well done. I don't think it was rushed at all because they knew each other. They have history. And why the hell not? You know, I already just came forward to it. Like, this might be our last night. So let's make it happen. <laughs> you know? That was great. Um, and Gendry is just like, oh, fuck it. All right. Go. Let's go. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. So great moment. Uh, that made me. Really happy there. Uh, you know, Macy Williams just saying, fuck it, I'm a woman now. You know, she got undressed and everything. I feel like that was a body double, though. <laughs> that wasn't really, uh, you know, the actress getting naked. I, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I, I doubt it. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was. I'd be like, what? <laughs> but great moment. And then Arya had a good moment with the Hound and Berk. It was just kind of brief. Uh, you know, she's just like, I'm not going to waste this moment on you old geezers. Um, okay. You know, like her and the hound talking. I just feel like there's there should be more there after all the hell they went through, you know, especially in season four. when He, was, he, he admits he was protecting her, you know, which I, I really liked. Um, you know, the Night's Watch gathered again, you know. Their watch begins yet again in Winterfell, which I like that. Uh, was it, I think his name is Ed. You know the last uh, member of the Night's Watch, you know part of Jon's crew back in back in the Crow days. You know he was there with Beric and uh, my boy Torment. Yo, my boy Torment killed me this episode. Yo, if anyone needs to survive, it's fucking Torment and Brienne to make those giants ben bane babies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yo, he had me dying in this episode. He had the greatest lines. He was fucking hilarious. Now we're gonna get into that um, scene. Oh, well, before that, I like that um, after the little meeting they had, you know, going over like like strategy planning on how they're gonna, you know, fortify their positions and defend Winterfell from, you know, the ice apocalypse that's coming. Yeah, uh, you had Tyrion have a moment with Bran where he sat down. And he said, "I got all night. We're in a castle. Tell me your journey," which is pretty cool. So at least, you know, at least Bran is just not outside, you know, <laughs> like wheel the boy in. He's just fucking staring into outer space. He's just weirding everybody out. He's just, just like, well, the, the Bran memes are killing me right now. He's just staring. He's just fucking like, I know how you die. I know how you die. I know what you had for supper last night. I know who you're sleeping with. You know, I was like, what the fuck, Bran? Bran is just on creeper mode. Anyway, best moments were the best moment of this episode. Jamie knighting Brienne. I love that. But leading up to that, uh, it was first Jamie and Tyrion. Sorry, Jamie and Tyrion. And they were drinking. 
you know, and then we're reminiscing about the last time they were in Winterfell. And then uh, Podrick comes with Brienne, and she tells, I like when she tells Podrick, like, only half a cup. And Jerry's like, fuck that, turn up, son. And he just <laughs> fills up his entire glass of piss-stained ale, whatever the hell he calls it. There's some shitty ale, you know, they're drinking. Um, probably Bush beer or, or fucking Coors Light or something <laughs> back in the day. You know, but anyway. So then we get the Tormund coming in. Tormund has the best fucking story I've ever heard. I'm, I, I'm going to rewatch the hell out of it. He tells a story how he got his last name Giants Bane. And this is, he just broke it down. I was like, oh, this is how I got my last name Giants Bane. So um, I killed the giant. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, killed the giant, killed me a giant. Then I fucked his wife. All right? Fucked his wife. Then she nursed me by the tit. Drank the milk of a giant woman. And that's how I got my name Giants Bane. And I grew stronger than ever because of that giant's milk. <laughs> I was fucking dying. <laughs> Tormund, yo. Please let Tormund. Please let Tormund live, yo. Like, and he was just crushing on Brienne so hard. I love that. I love that he was drinking uh, the, the beer, the ale, whatever the fuck they call it. Out of like what appears like a mammoth's tusk. And he's just chugging that shit, get all sloppy Joe, he don't give a fuck. Hell of an impression to make on the lady you want to ro romance and sweep off your feet, Tormund. Yo, Tormund kills me, man. But, uh, yeah, I cut the guy some slack, his game is on point, he's just like, you know, like, even Brianna's like, I'm happy that you're alive to fight alongside us, mm, you know, like, <laughs> but yeah, um, that, that whole interaction was great, and then Jamie knighting Brianna, everybody clapping. I fucking clapped. That was a great moment. Um, yeah, it's just uh, the end is coming, guys. The end is coming. It's, this is gonna be brutal. And then Podrick singing, and then we get you know quick shots of everybody right now. Like, uh, was it uh, you know the Gendry and Arya laying in bed naked after having a saxathon, you know? <laughs> and then uh, Gilly was there. You know, little Sam. It's good. It's good seeing her back. Yeah, and just oh man, and then you know the the thing is, uh, they're hiding basically all the other survivors who can't fight, like Varys and the rest of them, in the crypts. And I'm just like, is that even? A, I mean, I guess there's not many places to hide in Winterfell, so you got to put them in the crypts. But if they get overrun, these motherfuckers are gonna come. Cause you see how that hallway looks. It looks like maybe there's only two entrances. It's like you know. So, oh, fuck, what if they're all, like, in the middle, and these whites just come in, and, and then they're, they're fucked. They just get sandwiched. It's like, oh, ah, it kills me. You know, it's a lot of deaths. I wrote some. I wrote down some uh, death predictions I want to share. I wrote this shit down somewhere. We're going to find this shit, and we're going to talk about this because it's, you know, it's going down. All right. Here are some death predictions. And comment down below. I want to hear your guys' death predictions. Um, Bran is going to die. I feel like the Night King will, will almost get to him. But he says if he gets to him, it'll be like he'll erase everything. Like all memory of, of the history of Westeros and all this shit. And that's like, I guess that's like game over right there. So if he does that, he wipes out all the memories of the Three Eyed Raven. Does that mean like they, they just all get wiped out? Like what the fuck? Like. It's just like the the big band, like the Thanos fucking snap, and everybody is just wiped from existence. But I, I don't know. I but huh? anyway, maybe yeah. So I think Bran might die. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Bran dying. I just feel like he is gonna die. He's gonna be like the kind of like the sacrificial lamb, and he is the bait for the Night King. Um, I feel like either Arya or Gendry are gonna die, or maybe both of them. You know, uh, Varys might die too, cause you know he's gonna be in the crypt. Man, Varys might do something surprisingly heroic. Maybe he's the one that gets everybody out of the crib before it gets overrun by whites and shit. Uh, Grey Worm is definitely dying. Uh, <laughs> he's on the front line. He, the motherfucker has to die, you know? Um, Beric Dondarrion is going to die, you know, wielding his flaming sword. He's going to light these bastards up and he's just going to die, you know? 
there's a no no use for him after you know so I see him totally dying. Podrick is gonna die because he was good. He actually showed that he's been getting better with his sword. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people had a lot of those good moments, and those good moments are usually giveaways that those will be their final moments before their death. So I think Podrick is gonna die. Um, Liana Mormont is gonna. Oh fuck! Please don't let her die. But I think she's gonna die, and Theon might die. Theon is the one that's gonna protect Bran, part of the plan. So that rhyme. <laughs> so those are my predictions. Um, yeah, I I feel like Daenerys might survive, which is gonna fucking suck. But whatever. I feel like she's gonna be the strong candidate to survive and just piss us all off. <laughs> or maybe this this will humble her. Hopefully, you know, maybe she, that, that'll show her like I need to be a better queen. I just lost a lot of people that I didn't give a shit about, but now I do give a shit about. Who knows? Um, yeah. So, you know, it's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be bananas. Oh my god. Episode three is gonna change everything. It's gonna change the game forever. We're not going to be the same. I feel like the Red Wedding Syndrome is going to hit us all over again. We're just going to be like this, oh, fuck, you know. We're going to be just be emotionally drained and just, you know, on the edge of our seats as these White Walkers just start demolishing some of our favorite characters. Oh, it's going to break my heart. But it's going to be beyond fucking epic. You know, the, the same director, Battle of the Bastards, Winds of Winter, and Hard Home. Three of the top three best Game of Thrones episodes is directing this third episode and it's gonna be like an hour and thirty minutes long, like epic movie grand scale, just epicness. So I'm scared, I'm excited. What <laughs> it's gonna be a hell of a week. We got Endgame, Avengers Endgame this opening night, which hell yeah, I got my tickets, I'm ready for that. But wow, I'm just I don't know if I'm ready for this though. It's it's gonna be brutal. <sighs> yeah, but um Great episode, 9 out of 10. You know, all the pieces in the chess game are set. We're locked in. You know, a lot of people are, are going to die, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, there's my review of Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 2. What did you guys think of the episode? Comment down below. Let me know what are your death predictions going into this epic episode next week. We got the Battle of Winterfell in Episode 3. What do you think is going to happen? Let me know. Let's get a conversation going. If you're finding my channel for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like if you want. I'll catch you guys in the next one.